Thank you very much for attending. Welcome to our home. Uh, we are right now, again, just uh, right before Pesach 2022. So the lecture topic on my thought today will be searching for Chometz. Now the Talmud in Tractate of Sochem tells us that on the night of the 14th day of the month of Nisan, we search for Chometz, Levin. Uh, again, so this will be tomorrow night, Thursday night. We conduct a search in all of our dwelling places by the light of a candle. There are many homiletic interpretations concerning this search. Now the gematria of the Hebrew word chametz is 138, and the gematria of the Hebrew word matzah is 135. Now the difference between these two numbers is three. The number three may allude to that that changes matzah to chametz. This number may also allude to three specific character traits that, so to speak, sour the dough. As it states in Pirkei Avot 421, Rabbi Lazar HaKapur said that the desire for envy, lust, and honor, those three things drive a man from this world. It is these three traits that make the dough, man's ego, arrogance, rise. On this night, God expects us to search the depths of our souls and remove even the slightest hint of chametz, ego, from our midst. As we are told by the sages that God abhors anything that has an ego. Ego is an acronym for edging God over, seen as an expression of arrogance. There are two ingredients that were not allowed to be brought up as an offering on the altar in the Holy Temple. They were leaven and honey. Both of these items cause other things to rise. As the Gemara and Sota 5a states, God says of an arrogant person, he and I cannot live in the world together. Now, leaven is an allusion to something that is bitter, which may be seen as an expression of anger. And honey, on the other hand, is an allusion to something that is sweet, which may be seen as an expression of something of arrogance. So since they both can increase one's ego, both of these items are seen as obstacles on the road in our service of God Almighty. The Rambam states that given a choice, one should always choose the middle path in life. The only exception to the statement is when it comes to anger and arrogance. Then, he says, one should never allow themselves to get angry, and one should always be humble. Now, how do we accomplish this? Well, we search with the light of a candle. As it says, it's written in Mishle, Proverbs 6.23, Ki mitzvah ner, that a commandment is a candle, and the Torah or, and the Torah is a light. So through the fulfillment of mitzvah, we can create a flame. And with that flame, we can ignite the light of Torah in the darkest recesses of our minds. It is only then that we can identify and remove the leaven and the honey, the ego and the arrogance that resides within our hearts. The gematria of the Hebrew word matzah, as I mentioned before, is 135. This is the same gematria as the Hebrew word kala, which means physically light. This is seen as an allusion to the matzah, which is physically light in comparison to the chametz, the leavened bread, which is much heavier in weight. This also can be seen as advice on how one should best live their life. Travel light. Keep it simple and unpretentious. Be just like matzah. Organic, not bothering with all the additives and preservatives. All they do is just add more poison and calories into our bodies. In fact, many diseases can trace their origin back to obesity, which is overindulgence, again, chametz. Matzah alludes to a simple and healthy lifestyle, both physically and spiritually, traveling light. In order for matzah to not become chametz, to ferment, we must work the dough constantly, guarding that it doesn't, that it doesn't rise. All of this must be done within an 18-minute period of time. Now, the number 18 is the gematria of the Hebrew word chai, which means life. The only way for us to live our lives properly is for us to keep working the dough, staying awake at the wheel. If we don't focus, well, then our ego takes over and then the dough rises. Once that happens, we now have issues that we are forced to address. So this year, 
let us look deep within our souls and try to do a proper, proper bedika, a proper search. Let us all search with a, that godly candle that exists deep within our souls. And with that light, let us destroy all the hummus that resides therein. Let us all make a conscious effort to work on our ego. Again, edging God over. We must always remember that our evil inclination is always at work. He never gives up. He is constantly trying to distract us. Sometimes he does so with bitterness. That's alluded to by the leaven. And other times with sweetness, which is alluded to by the honey. Either way, the results are the same. Hmm. He has succeeded and we have failed. So this year, let us do our spring cleaning properly in the hope that we can create a dear abitoctonum, a dwelling place for God in this lower world, a domicile in the depths of our hearts, a place where, pardon me, which is totally free of chametz. Let us make it a home for God where he can feel comfortable, where he doesn't have to worry about receiving an eviction notice. And with that, let us hope for the coming of Mashiach Sekenu quickly in our time. So, what are we supposed to do this year? You know, there's a story written in Przanski's Haggadah called The Night of Amuna. It's a story about Zanvil. Zanvil was a poor innkeeper who couldn't pay his rent. So Zanvil tried talking, begging the parrots, the landowner, to give him more time, as if that would have helped him, to pay off his debt. He was basically out of options. But his wife, a righteous woman, told him that in the distance down the road was the synagogue of the Apta Rebbe, where Rav Ram Yeshua Heschel of Apt, known as the Ohev Yisrael, the lover of Jewish people. She told him that the Rebbe was giving his Shabbos Haggadah sermon that week. She said that Zamla should go and listen, maybe, just maybe there would be some advice that the Rebbe might offer that could help, help them in their situation. Thinking that he had nothing to lose, so Zanva went to the shul of the Apta Rebbe for his special Shabbos sermon. The Rebbe began. There are two brachos, there are two blessings that refer to God as the Redeemer of Israel. One is called Goal Yisrael, that we say every day in the Amidah, in the prayer, Re'enal look upon our affliction. And the other is Ga'al Yisrael, we say in the Pesach, Passover Haggadah. So what's the difference between the two terms? He answered that Ga'al Yisrael, that we say on Pesach night, is basically in the past tense. After all, we're thanking God for redeeming us from the Egyptian bondage, which occurred many years ago, before, and again, to our ancestors. But Goel Yisrael, that we say in the Amida, that is in the present tense, asking God to save us from our daily troubles and difficulties. This prayer takes into account the constant miracles that God performs for us each and every day when we are in need. Well, Zanville thought these words were encouraging, but in reality, not particularly useful for his situation. And so he began to walk away. But then the Abdul Rebbe caught his attention when he gave an example to illustrate his point. The Rebbe said, uh, let's say that there is a man who lives in a faraway village. Uh, we'll call him Zanville. And let's say the Poritz is threatening to throw him and his family out of his inn if he doesn't pay all the back rent that he owes. So what does Zanvil do? <laughs> well, when Zanvil heard these words, he froze in his tracks. He wasn't going anywhere. He wanted to hear the answer to the question. What does Zanvil do? The Rebbe paused. I'll tell you what he does. He cries out to Hashem to help him. As it states in the Passover Haggadah, the Nitzach el Hashem, and the Jews, cried out to Hashem in Egypt. And then the verse continues and says that God heard their voice. Tonight, shouted the Rav, is the night of the Seder. It is a great time of godly compassion, a time when God hears and accepts our prayers. And I know of a special treasure that was passed down to me, that when you reach the words in the Haggadah of Vanitzak el Hashem, then you should cry out to God and pray with all your heart for help with the specific and personal pain that you're experiencing. Well, someone who cries out at that moment is guaranteed 
that his voice will be heard by God Almighty. And just as the children of Israel were answered in Egypt on this very same night, so too will you be redeemed from all your troubles. Well, <laughs> Zambul King couldn't get home fast enough. He told his wife that this year when we reach the words in the Haggadah, the Nitzak al Hashem, and they cried out to God, the whole family is going to scream out to God as loud as we can, and he should save us from being evicted by the Porites. And so it was. When they reached the place in the Haggadah, the whole family screamed out at the top of their lungs. In fact, they screamed so loud that they didn't hear the banging at their front door. Finally, when they quieted down, Zanville heard the banging at his door. He answered the door, and standing there was his Gentile neighbor. In his hand, he held two sacks. He reached inside and quickly placed them on the floor inside the door and told Zanville that he was being chased by the police. He told him that he knew that Zanville was an honest man and could be trusted. He told Zanville that he was leaving the gold with him. He said that if he returned, well, then one sack would belong to Zanville and the other sack would be his. And if he didn't make it back, then both sacks would belong to Zanville. And, with, and before Zambal could say anything, his neighbor was gone into the night. The next morning, Zambal heard that his neighbor trying to make his escape had drowned in the river and was dead. Zambal's fortunes had changed overnight. He was now able to pay off the porrits and live a comfortable life with his wife and children. Uh, his worries were over. After Yontav, Zambal went to see the after Rebbe to tell him the good news and all that had happened. Now, the Rav agreed that clearly the words that he had spoken were chosen by heaven for Zanville's benefit. However, it was Zanville's own simple belief that brought about his salvation, crying out to God with the pure belief that he will help and bring all the blessings in the world. So let us cry out to God in this very special night that he should finally put an end to all the suffering and all the evil in the world. It is a time for him to usher in the era of peace and salvation with the coming of Mashiach Sukenu. Now, thank you for listening. God bless you all. God should bless you with good, and again, all the miracles that you need should be granted. God should bless you with health, wealth, safety, and happiness. And again, Shabbat Shalom and Thank you again for listening.